For this example, f of x equals square root of x squared plus 7. To find the interval of the function concave upward and downward, we are going to use the second derivative if the side positive, upward, concave upward, sorry. For the side is less than zero or negative, the graph concave downward. Let's try the first derivative. This function can be rewritten as the power form as x, 8x squared plus 7 to the power 1 half. So use the general power rule to get 1 half 8x squared plus 7 to the power negative 1 half multiplied by the derivative of 8x squared plus 7, which is 16x. Simplify a little bit more to be 8 times x over the quantity 8x squared plus 7 to the power 1 half. Our goal is to use the second derivative, so keep going to find the next row of the derivative. We can treat this as the quotient form. The top, the high is 8x, the low is the quantity 8x squared plus 7 to the power 1 half. The derivative going to be low d high minus high d low, draw the line, low squared. So on the side note, for the high, which is 8x, the low is 8x squared plus 7 quantity power 1 half. The d high is 8, and d low is the derivative of 8x squared plus 7 to the power 1 half, which is the same as the first derivative. We just borrow that form. So 8x over 8x squared plus 7 to the power 1 half. Then put the terms over to the formula for the second derivative, which will give us the low, which is the quantity 8x squared plus 7 to the power 1 half times d high, which is 8, minus the high 8x multiplied by d low, which is 8x over the quantity 8x squared plus 7 to the power 1 half. Draw the line, low squared, the low, the 8x squared plus 7 to the power 1 half, and the whole thing power 2. Next, we are going to simplify. The denominator is x squared plus 7, sin the power 1 half, and Two, they take care of each other to be the power one, or just the quantity 8x squared plus 7. And the numerator, we have the common factor 8 and 8. So we just factor the 8 out. So we have 8 here, and then the quantity, the power one half is the same as the square root. So square root of x squared plus 7. Subtracted by, then we just multiply the x and 8x together to be 8 times x squared over this term, also the square root form. So 8x squared plus 7. And the denominator, when you divide, it's the same as multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to bring it to joy, the front term, as the denominator of it. And now we are going to simplify the the terms in the bracket consolidate into one fraction. So make it the same denominator. 8 over 8x squared plus 7. And then in the bracket here, multiply top and bottom by the square root of x squared plus 7. So it becomes 8x squared plus 7. And then minus 8x squared, all divided by the square root of 8x squared plus 7. It's nice that 8x squared minus 8 squared will take care of each other. That will give us the second derivative in the form of 8 times 7, which is 56, divided by 8x squared plus 7, multiplied by square root of 8x squared plus 7. And for the second derivative, we're going to determine the psi on the left and on the right of the hypercritical. So next step, we are going to find the hypercritical value by letting this be zero. 
or the bottom. So the next step, we are going to find the hypercritical level. But the hypercritical value is going to be from two different cases. The case is the f double prime equals zero and f double prime undefined. So the case of f double prime is zero, that means the numerator is going to be zero. Undefined denominator is going to be zero. So that means the first one, 56 equals zero. Nope, it's not going to happen. So this case is gone. For the undefined case, that means 8x squared plus 7 times um, square root of 8x squared plus 7 is going to be 0. So we're going to solve for x. In this case, we do not have any number to satisfy it because any number, either positive or negative, when you square, you're going to get positive number or non-negative number and then add it by another non-negative number. So the whole number here always positive, always positive, or above zero. Therefore, in this case, we do not have any hypercritical value. Then we just think about the real number line, the whole real number line. Any number that you're going to pick when you plug it in, the second derivative, always positive. Therefore, the interval that the function concave upward is going to be negative infinity to infinity. And then, since we do not have hypercritical value, therefore, we do not have the point of inflection.